Hi everyone, this is Amelia and I'm here at my show in um, the 1920 gallery at uh, the um, Barnes Student Center here in Indiana Wesleyan University. So um, I wanted to take you on a quick tour um, of the exhibition in case um, you are not able to see it in person. It's been super fun. I've been able to see a lot of fellow classmates here that are here for the 20th uh, reunion uh, kind of shindigs here and homecoming. Um, but if you are far away um, in other places like Colorado, Pennsylvania, uh, wherever you find yourselves, I'm hoping that this will give you a taste of the exhibit um, and let you enjoy the work from where you're at. Um, so what I will say is um, I am recording this and um, so it'll be available later on uh, to be able to um, to click and look at um, in other platforms like my website and things like that. Um, but so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take you around. I'm going to do a quick span around the whole um, show and talk a little bit about um, what got the work inspired. And then I'll go around and do a quick little talk about um, each of the pieces. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to switch my screen. Okay, so this is the front of the gallery. Um, this is where um, you can come in here. Um, one of the things that is unique about this exhibit is I have a little booklet um, that showcases the work um, it along with like prayers that go about it. So I've got like the artist statement up there and then each of the, um, the paintings has a collage background uh, showing you what it looks like on the um, on the underside of the painting, and then a prayer that goes along with it. So this particular booklet is available for download, um, and like people that come and visit the gallery, they can get it right here. Um, and I also have them available for pre-order purchase as a physical booklet that'll be mailed to you. That is available through my website at Amelia. Furman.com and you can go to the prints section to be able to pre-order one of those. So this is where the ex exhibition starts. And um, these pieces don't have uh, titles um, on the edges uh, to explain them because you're supposed to um, go through the prayer booklet um, with them and find them. So it's kind of a little bit of a discovery. So this first piece is called um, Resilience. So that's what gets us started. And I'll come back to that one. But for now, I'm just going to do a quick little scan. This uh, particular body of work includes a lot of trees, but also other um, little um, subjects, like the subject matter is anywhere from like plants to um, flowers and botanicals. So it spans more than just trees. And the work really looks at um, communing with, um, with nature and finding God in that nature. Um, and the pieces actually kind of started more as self-portraits, like this one here is more of like a, a self-portrait um, piece, um, as are my um, gathering tree here and my bulwark tree. Um, and those um, are from uh, childhood memories of trees. And then as the body of work continued to form and grow and evolve, um, it became more of a conversation um, about the present. So moving from the past to the present. Um, and then also going more, instead of having a lot of my story included, it ended up being more centered on uh, the characters and qualities of who God is and, and um, who I've uh, come to know him as. So, so that's really what the whole body of work is about. And the um, idea behind it too, is that as you get lost in his nature and who he is, um, you are more and more found. Um, and um, so it's very, very kind of counterintuitive, uh, also countercultural. So it's uh, fun to be able to share something um, with that unique perspective. So this first piece um, is called Resilience. And what I might end up doing is I will show you um, what the collage looks like underneath if I can find it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that for that, but you can find that in that prayer booklet. So for this piece, um, this piece is all about um, 
God's resilience and how it is then also reflected in our own resilience. This is a cottonwood tree. Um, and underneath it, you're going to see a young girl. Um, and she's in this particular piece. She is dropping um, uh, apples, which to me, a lot of times is symbolic of flesh, symbolic of um, uh, sin nature and things along those uh, lines. So um, so she is kind of giving that portion of herself up. Um, maybe other things um, that she um, was just kind of holding on to. And um, she is, um, and that's that idea of like resilience as far as just growing and formation and, and the hope that we have in resilience. This cottonwood tree, as you can see, has like some portions that are kind of um, cut off. Um, it is gnarly. It is textured. It has lots and lots of life lived. Um, and that's why to me, it represented this idea of resilience um, and that idea of um, moving on even when things are kind of tough sometimes. So that is that piece. And then, as I said here, this is uh, one of my earlier tree pieces called the gathering tree. Um, and this piece is about um, a Chinese chestnut tree that grew up in our backyard. And it, um, if you look closely here in the collage, you'll see that there's all sorts of stuff related to my childhood um, in this piece. Um, and then there's also four um, young boys that are in this painting that are climbing the tree at various places, and they represent the four members of my family. Um, this particular tree is where we would gather for family pictures. Um, we would gather with friends and climb it. Um, and so it really... Um, was a wonderful uh, place for me to learn what it's like to live within community, to uh, look beyond my own needs and, and help other people um, either climbing or getting out <laughs> of different situations. Also looking out for them. Uh, chestnut burrs are, are pretty sharp and prickly. Um, and actually I have a couple of them you can see right in here, um, some hand-drawn chestnut burrs. Um, and the good thing is, is in the inside is really, really good chestnut seeds that are fantastic roasted, um, on a pan. Um, but I just felt a, a big connection with this tree as I grew up. And, um, and so it is called the gathering tree. Um, this piece right here is called sunstruck. Um, and it is another cottonwood tree um, that has that wonderful textured bark in it. And um, the background to the piece um, talks about Psalm 16 is the, um, the main um, kind of like idea that um, is, is found in this piece. And it talks about pleasant places. And uh, I started thinking about what that meant for me as far as what does it mean to be found in pleasant places, um, to be um, kind of guided and directed into those pleasant places. Um, and what came to mind was just the, the pleasant place of relationship and how it doesn't matter where um, I am or what I'm doing, um, but it is my relationship with Jesus that is the most pleasant place to be. And that never changes. That is always something I can hang on to. Um, and so that's why it's called sunstruck, um, as well as just like play on words as far as like the sun hitting the branches. Um, there's this warmth of the piece. Um, and the title is actually spelled S-O-N instead of S-U-N. So again, a little play on words. Um, this piece here is called Bulwark, and it is um, a story about when I was when I was young. There, um, we had a Ford Fairmount car. You can kind of see it, kind of right in there. Um, there's actually several uh, iterations of this car all throughout the painting, um, because the the story behind this tree is that it actually very well could have um, saved my brother's life when he. Um, tried to ride our Ford Fairmount car down the hill when he was four years old. Um, and the, the tree ended up stopping him uh, from going down into a creek that was down further um, down in the valley. And um, he, you can see here, there's a, a big scar on the tree and like some
some some mold and damage and stuff that has happened there. Um, and that's where the, the car struck the tree. So it almost felt very much like a sacrifice of the tree to to protect him because we we then had to cut it down um, after several years. It just started to um, to falter and not do as well. Um, it just reminded me too of, of God's provision and his shielding in our life. Um, and that's the lesson that I carried through and continued to deepen in me as I grew. Um, and the trees started it along with my very naughty four-year-old little brother. Um, this piece here is called uh, Forest Flock. Um, this piece is um, really about um, community of believers and the family of faith. Um, and how I kind of see us as like this little flock. Um, when I think of ferns, to me, they look like uh, they look like feathers uh, that have just you know grown in a different way. And so this piece uses a lot of bird imagery, um, a lot of lacy um, types of like paper doilies and feathers in it and music. Um, and so, I see this as kind of like a, a picture of how um, uh, we're all kind of like gathered in this group um, on the ground, um, trying to perform and uh, do acts of grace as we can um, under, you know, God's light that he, that he lets us see. And um, I love the juxtaposition of the, the, the ferns along like the, the darker ground and just how it kind of shines up and just, I don't know, softens things. And so I, I that's my hope and our prayer for, for the church is just that we are able to be that to the world around us. So that's that piece. Um, and then over here, this little sweet 12 by 12 is called um, Wellspring. And um, like when I saw this bee drinking out of the clover um, and um, just looking for pollen, I thought of uh, just like just that everlasting fountain um, and wellspring that we have in, in God. And so that's what this piece is all about. And in it, you'll see more and more, you'll see other bees. Um, and then here's the funny thing about this piece. I don't know if you can, you can kind of see it here. There's a couple um, different uh, circular shapes here that are covered mostly with paint. But what they are, are they, they, it, it's a collage rendition of a water molecule um, looking at the two, um, was it H2O? So the two hydrogen molecules um, bonded with the one oxygen molecule. So um, I do think maybe hanging out in a science oriented um, studio area has been having an effect on my work. <laughs> so it's, it's been fun to see those little surprises come along the way. Um, and this one here um, is called Glory. It is um, taken from the, um, the, the passage of scripture, uh, Philippians 2. Uh, and it, it, this is the, the panel, this particular panel looks at the, the uh, later portion in that um, chapter, talks about um, uh, God exalting Christ above all, like after his, after his uh, death and, and just like something we can look forward to as well, as far as future glory. And like, when I look at this young Aspen um, and it's just, it's in, it's in springtime. Um, it's just got like that sense of life, new life and glory. And that's what it brought to my mind. Um, and a lot of the characters in the um, collage in the background, you're going to see a whole bunch of like, um, Ast um, astrology maps, some star maps, um, and that's related to the um, the past, the part of the passage that says to shine like stars in the universe. Um, and then the other characters in here, the birds and the um, the people playing musical instruments, um, I think are just little glimpses of what glory looks like, and something we can look forward to later. So that is that one. And then I'm going to skip this one real quick because the uh, corresponding piece to um, to the glory one is called sacrifice, and this one, um, as you can see, has a different feel to it. And it's aspen leaves all over, littering the ground, um, um, kind of reminding me of uh, just like that sacrificial state um, that happens in the fall when the leaves are falling down, preparing for a dormant season, um, and so it, it's part of 
of life. It's something that is, is necessary, but I am always like kind of saddened by seeing these beautiful leaves fall to the ground. Um, and so there's just a little bit of that in there. Um, and this speaks to the first part of Philippians two, which looks at the sacrifice of Jesus and becoming, um, a servant, um, to us. Um, and pouring um, himself out, not expecting us to understand what glory looks like um, and what holiness looks like, but just coming and taking care of everything um, in our stead. So that's what that piece is about. And they are definitely glory and sacrifice are meant to go together. This piece in the middle here um, is um, another one of my fern pieces, and it's got a very similar uh, feel and message to it as my forest flock. This one's called Forest Feathers, and um, it again looks at that idea of of grace and of um, you know just that idea of shelter and softness. Um, and to me, these look like like I said, like before wings. Um, and it makes me think of the, the verse, uh, that talks about, um, uh, what is I think it might be on the soft. No, I was going to say it's on the side there, but, um, where it talks about, um, God, um, ha wanting, you know, yearning to have us under his wings. Um, and then also the idea of us having our own wings, um, and being able to fly and be free because of his protection, because of his grace. So that is that one. And then this one here is called Everlasting. And um, this looks at just the, um, the everlasting nature of who God is, um, as well as his promises and um, his faithfulness. And so this just, it, to me, this piece, like when I looked at it or when I looked at this particular image, it made me think of like the burning bush and um, just the, that hotness, um, the intensity um, and um, just that, that idea. And so that's kind of like where like that idea of promises um, was kind of laid out in, in a lot of Old Testament texts and then is fulfilled in, in who Jesus is and has yet to be fulfilled and when he comes back. But um, that's what this piece is all about is just um, celebrating and meditating on that faithfulness. So that's a, a fun one. There's tons of, so this one has um, different like time pieces laid on their side. Um, and then other ones that are like clocks that kind of look at time. So there's just this tension between um, the passage of time, as well as the knowledge that, um, you know, we have eternity to look forward to. And um, so there's definitely tension there. Uh, this is my favorite part of it right here. You see a little, little boy, he is looking in the clock, looking at the pendulum swing. Um, and there's just something about that. When I saw that piece of collage material, I had to put it in there. And then this piece is, um, this is called Into the Depths. And this piece is a little bit uh, different in that uh, instead of, focusing more on who God is or who I am. This is a combination of those two. Um, and this is looking uh, very closely at relationship um, and, and just what happens when you walk with, with God um, and, and abide with him. Um, and that's been, that's been my word of the year for the year. And so that's what this piece is about. And you can see um, there's a face there. Um, she looks a little bit distraught kind of, wondering and questioning um and then if you continue to follow down she is holding the hands of a, a young boy who's obviously in distress um and then there's another little boy over here i don't exactly see where he is he's around here but when i saw this first picture of this lady I resonated with her as a, also a mother of two boys and, and just how you just feel like you're constantly having to hold everything together. And so she really has become a symbol for me in my, in, in some of the times that I've felt, um, in my, in my, uh, in raising my kids. Um, but this isn't a sad story necessarily. It, uh, what this does is give a little bit of context because, um, these two trees in here are also representative of, of God and I wading together into the depths of life. Um, and then the neat thing about this piece is, um, you can see here, here's a diver 
kind of going into the depths of the of the sea um, and holding on to another diver's foot here as this other diver uh, plunges into this beautiful array of um, vegetation and flowers and stuff that really shouldn't be growing underneath the water, just as the two trees really shouldn't be in the middle of the lake. Um, and that to me is um, God um, kind of pulling me down to uh, search into the depths of who he is and who I am. And now I never have to do that alone. So that's the story of that piece. This one here is called The Waiting Tree, and it is another rendition of um, one of my stories from growing up. Um, my dad used to um, own uh, an insurance agency, and we would constantly have to stop there to check out phone messages and do some paperwork. And I would sit in the maple tree that was just outside his office and twirl down these little maple seeds um, in order to pass the time. And, um, and so it was kind of my first um, kind of moments in trying to learn how to wait and wait well. Um, and then I related this idea back to how well God waits for me. Um, and so again, conversational, kind of looking at like what he's taught me and what I've learned about him through um, time in the maple tree. My fit, one of my favorite places or parts of the, of this particular work is there are these little helicopters and they're kind of hard to see you can kind of see the see the um the edge of one here so these are play school helicopters and i have i think there's another one right there you can see it um and then i think a third one um but they have um maple seed pods as their copters instead of the the play school ones um and so i combine those two elements um just cuz like the helicopters were something i played with all the time as a child um and so it felt kind of kind of perfect to put those in there um along with the maple seeds And then this one is called Light of Love. Um, and this one is a, kind of a, a, a special one. It uses um, submissions of people's ideas regarding what real love is. Um, and you can see them throughout the piece. There are these little squares of orange paper um, and they are scattered throughout the entire piece. And they range from like, things, items and stuff about God um, to just ideas of family. Um, and so it was really, really special to get people's perspectives on what real love looks like. Like, I, I love this here. This one says keeper of my solitude. Uh, and I think of that, um, you know, that's such a great way of saying that that's an act of love. Um, and then on this other side here, we've got um, sacrificial, um, uh, got giving and filled with joy and compassion, real love stays no matter what. Um, so all of these became part of the background for this piece. Um, and the, the rest of the collage materials related to the idea of light and how, um, love, um, really does bring a sense of light and lightness, to our world and um that's how i feel too when i think about um god's love and uh, just how wide and deep and high it is so that's what this piece is and as you can see another cottonwood tree near the water it's kind of fun um so that one's there and then these the this group of four over here these are little 12 by 12s um and they are all about all different things so like footpaths to me talks a little bit more about my relationship um, with God and how he um, like takes me on these wild journeys that are not efficient, um, that take time. They take um, a lot of uh, holding on to him uh, to guide me. And I have, I like have no idea where the next step is going to be. And I think that's exactly how he wants it. So that's called footpaths. And, um, that's, that's been a, a fun one to do really personal and meaningful. Um, this one is called anchored and, um, it's really about the idea that like God is never, um, never changes. Um, he, 
Um, I don't think he ever does the same thing twice, but his character never changes. His promises never change. He is everlasting and um, unmoving in that respect. Um, and so that is so comforting to me to stay anchored to when life around me is changing all of the time. When I'm changing, when the people around me are changing, circumstances are changing, whether I want them to or not. Um, and like this, this kind of transition between uh, fall and summer really had me uh, thinking about that. And that's why I chose this particular piece to go along with that. And in this one, I don't know if you can see, kind of, you can kind of see her. She's a, a figure um, she kind of comes down this way. She's got a striped sweater on and she is sitting on a timepiece that is on its side, um, which again, I love that idea of, of, of just placing myself in that, um, that type of care um, of an infinite God. So then this one is called trailblazers. And again, it's a little bit more relational um, and talks about, um, just the idea of blazing new trails, um, kind of like footpaths, <laughs> you know, not going on well-worn paths, but going on, on trails that, um, have not been made yet. Um, and, um, just the, the non-linearness of life and, um, how you can walk with God in that. And then this piece here, this is called Liberation. And, um, it, this one is kind of, uh, just talking about, um, the idea of uh, the freedom that uh, Jesus gives when he um, becomes your your Lord. So, um, so yeah, so that's what that one is all about. Um, and that concludes the um, the tour. So that is that's the whole group of artwork in a nutshell. Um, and I'm going to go ahead. I'll stick this on the website and on social media. You can check it out and use that virtual tour. You can share it with other people. Um, I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on this little tour and, um, hope you guys have a great day. Um, like I said, you can grab that booklet, um, on my website at ameliaferman.com under the print section. You can pre-order that. You can also, if you get onto my mailing list, um, I will be happy to send you a digital um, download copy as well. Um, and you can also email me if, um, if you haven't received that yet. So uh, thanks again for joining me for this show. Thanks for giving me a couple minutes for your time to share what this work means. Um, and my hope is that you continue to find yourself uh, getting lost in who he is. Have a good one.